Shabbat Shalom, everyone. So great to, uh, to see you all here. Welcome once again to our University Synagogue, uh, Kabbalat Shabbat. So tonight, we did something really radical and um, gave the cantor the night off to enjoy Shabbat with her own family, which is uh, such a great thing to be able to do because through the magic of uh, video, she will be here with us anyway. <laughs> so we're so delighted to have uh, all of you to join us uh, as well. And uh, we will celebrate Shabbat together from our own homes, but as always, spiritually, all together in one place, all together, even though we are physically separate. <clears throat> so we're going to turn to the kindling of the Shabbat lights with which we will welcome uh, Shabbat this evening, and we'll invite the cantor to lead us. If you have your own candles with you, I invite you to uh, light them now with us. So you know the uh, the Hebrew word for angels means messengers, and because uh, that's of course what angels are—they are God's messengers. And uh, as we welcome Shabbat, we join together in Shalom Aleichem, welcoming God's messengers into our life and our presence. And we are invited as we listen to these words and think about the um, the angels that join us on Shabbat to think about God's messengers that surround us every day. 
and um, the messages that they bring to us all the time, and especially to recognize the blessings that they bring us on Shabbat. Let's join together in listening to Shalom Aleichem. to and would like to from where you are, I invite you to please rise as we join together now in the Baruch Hu. Oh, 
Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai said to his disciples, what is the right path? Rabbi Eliezer said, a good eye, to have a good eye. Rabbi Joshua said, a good friend, to have a good friend. Rabbi Yossi said, a good neighbor. Rabbi Shimon said, foresight. And Rabbi Ele Eleazar said, a good heart. Rabbi Yochanan responded to his disciples and said, I prefer the words of Eleazar ben Arach for his words, a good heart, include all of yours. We turn now to the Shema. I invite you, if you would like to, or if you are standing, to remain standing, if you'd like to, to rise again as we join together. seated and we'll continue together with the words of Vea Hafta. Vea Hafta et Adonai Elohecha Bechol Levavcha Ubechol Nafshecha Ubechol Meodecha Vehayu Advarim Ha'ele Asher anochi mitzavecha hayom alivavecha v'shinanta ham levanecha v'dibarta ham b'shivtecha b'veitecha uvlechtecha v'aderech uvshoch becha uvkum mecha uksharkam leot al yadecha. Vahayulatotafot bene necha, Uchtaftaham, Almazazot betecha, Uvihi sharecha. Lema hantis geru, Vasitem et kol mitzvotai, Vitem gadoshim leloechem, Ahani adonai elohechem. Asher hotze tietchem me eretz mitraim liot lachem lelohim ani adonai lohechem adonai lohechem emet. Know this, and you will be free. Where do you come from? And where are you going? And to whom do you give an account? Join together in our song of freedom.
we give thanks for the gift of Shabbat. Veshamru O tile olam, o tile olam, vishamru. Yamin, Asa et Adonai, Asa et Adonai, et Hashamayim, Ve et Aaret, Ve Shamru. Shabbat v'inafash, Shabbat v'inafash, Shabbat v'inafash. Last time, v'shamru. We are used to the words that we see on the bottom of the screen, our introduction to the Amidah. It is actually a mystical kavana that was added to the Amidah to prepare us for the words we are about to say. After we have chanted them, we will uh, continue silently um, with the words of Avot, Ve'imahot, and Givorot, and Kedushah, and an We'll invite you in a moment to rise if you would like to and are able to, to uh, continue with the um, Amidah in just a moment. This Kavanah, extended Kavanah, comes from Rabbi Bacha Ibn Fakuda, who is the founder of the Musar movement that some of you have studied and are familiar with. He said, Adonai, open my lips that my mouth may sing your praise, polish my tongue, prepare my mind rouse my soul, straighten out my thinking, fix my misconceptions, listen to my speech, attend to my words, hear my prayer, bring my joy near to you, and my plea, and may my plea reach you as I am standing to tell your praise. Na 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 
Hello, I need so little We turn now to words of healing, words that have meant so much over these past many months as we have joined together and prayed for the healing of those suffering from this illness, the healing of our world from all that it suffers from in these difficult moments. And of course, 
the prayer of healing for those we hold dear in our hearts. And so as we prepare to join together once again this evening in the, this blessing, this Misha Beirach for healing, praying for a Rufu Ashlema, a full and complete healing for all who are ill, I invite you to take a moment to unmute yourself if you would like to share the names of those for whom you are praying this Shabbat. And of course, as always, to enter their names into our chat box as well. Josh Mills, John Mills, Sheila Wexler Frieda, Gwen Olicker. Am I forgetting? Morley Feinstein. Morley Feinstein. Irene Hecht, Linda Wurzel. Roz Weissman, Sandy Weissman. Carolyn Zinzer. Rabbi Feinstein. I'm trying. Rabbi Rabbi Morley Feinstein, Roz Weissman, Cindy Letterer, Josh Mills, Roberta Smith, Nan Zaitlin, Freda Vieira. Roberta Smith, Leslie Michaelis. I'll have to remember to put her in there. Rabbi, I think your mic might be muted. I do that every time. <clears throat> we return this week to the, uh, to the story of creation. But wait, I hear you saying, we just read the story of creation two weeks ago. No need to go back to it just yet. We heard it when we started our cycle of Tori reading once again. So why are we returning to the story of creation of the world and humanity once again? Well, actually no worries. We're actually not returning to that story of creation. This Shabbat we hear the second of actually three stories of creation in the Torah. The first story, of course, as I mentioned, we heard a few weeks ago, the be very beginning of the Torah, the story about the creation of the world, of the physical world. And in general, in a general sense, our particular human role as caretakers for the world. This week, in this second story of creation, we learn of the creation of, um, of the Jew. The creation of Jewish personhood in the form of Abraham, 
and Sarah. The story of Abraham and Sarah, or Avram and Sarai, as they are known when we first meet them, is the story of the creation of the Jewish soul. It is the story of one's personal, intimate relationship with God. The God of Adam and Eve is Malkenu, our, ru our ruler, sovereign of the universe. The God of Abraham and Sarah is Avinu, our parent. There are interesting similarities between the two stories. Both the stories of Adam and Eve and of Abraham and Sarah begin with a moment of rupture where they are dislodged, both couples set adrift and cast out onto a journey, out into the world. For both couples, it is a moment of transition and of transformation. Adam and Eve, of course, eat the forbidden fruit. And in doing so, they become self-aware, sentient beings. As such, they can no longer remain innocently and naively in the Garden of Eden. They are cast from the comfort of the garden out into the real world to experience both the pains and joys of human experience. A journey, of course, that we all share, every human who has followed them. Similarly, Abraham and Sarah are sent out from the garden as our Torah begins. The Eternal said to Avram, go forth from your native land, from your birthplace, from your father's house to the land that I will show you. Abraham and Sarah must leave the comfortable innocence of their home in order to set out on a journey of spiritual self-discovery. No doubt their departure was as difficult and painful as that of Adam and Eve. Our sages suggest just this in their commentary on this first line of the Parsha. Why they ask, does it say God, that, why does it say from your native land, your birthplace, your father's house? Wouldn't it have been enough to just have said any one of them, lech lecha from your land or from your birthplace or from your father's house? Why the need for all three? This particular phrasing our rabbis suggest was out of compassion, was an attempt on God's part to soften the blow. You must leave your native land. You must leave the city of your birth. You must leave your parents' home. Now, this isn't so difficult for us to understand, is it? Journeys of self-discovery are almost always predicated upon getting out of our comfort zone, often involve leaving our home, leaving our city, and actually even sometimes, yes, leaving our homeland, our nation. While Adam and Eve's journey is out, of, is out into the world, out into the physical world to interact with and discover the realities of that world. Abraham and Sarah's journey, on the other hand, is one that takes them within. Their journey involves interaction with and discovery of their human spirit, more particularly of the place of God within the human spirit. This is suggested by the puzzling instruction with which the story begins. Lech lecha. Go forth is how the phrase is often translated. But the translation conceals the difficulty of the phrase. We don't know exactly how to translate it. Lech, we are told, and that is easy enough. It is the command to go, to leave, to get on your way. But the question is to where? And the next word, lecha, which is translated as going forth, does not mean to go forth. The word literally means for yourself or to yourself. Go for yourself, Avram is told, and Sarah, or go to yourself. Either way, the phrase suggests much more than simply 
heading out down the road on a journey. A suspicion that is confirmed, I think, six verses later when they arrive at their destination. Avor Avram Be'eretz Ad Makom Shechem. Abram passed through the land as far as the site of Shechem. Once again, a puzzling turn of phrase suggests that there is more going on here. The Hebrew could have simply read, Avor Avram Be'eretz Ad Shechem. Avram passed through the land until Shechem. So why Ya'avor Avram Be'eretz Ad Makom Shechem? Avram passed through the land until Makom Shechem, the place of Shechem. What is that all about, that Makom? Well, the word Makom, we know, is another name for God. God as a place. God as a very real, physical, felt presence in our lives. At the conclusion of a funeral, for instance, we say to mourners, Hamakom yenechem etchem. May God comfort you, we say. But literally it means, may the place, hamakom yenechem, may the place comfort you. May this be a place of God's comfort, where you feel God's presence. V'ya'avor Avram ba'eretz ad makom shechem. The verse suggests that Abraham had not only arrived at a physical place, but at a spiritual one, more importantly. The journey to the promised land, as we very well know, is much more a journey of the soul than it is of the body. And lest we still wonder about the nature of this journey they have taken, Avram and Sarai's spiritual transformation is recognized finally by a change in their names that happens in this parsha. V'lo yikra od et shimcha Avram, shimcha Avraham, and you shall no longer be called Avram, but your name shall be Abraham. And a few verses later, v'yomor Elohim el Avraham, Sarai ishtecha lo tikra et shma Sarai ki sara shma. And God said to Abram, Abraham, as for your wife Sarai, you shall not call her Sarai, but her name shall be Sarah. The letter He is added to both of their names, which some interpret as symbolically recognizing God's presence now within them not just with them, but within them, signifying a transformation that has happened within them. The hey serving as a shortened representation of yud hey vav hey. We say Hashem often and write it in Hebrew just with a hey, just like with Avraham and Sarah. If only that, if, if only that were the only transformation of course, that Abraham was to experience. Because as you know, before we conclude this week's portion, there will be one more transformation, a rather painful reminder for him and his progeny of his new breed with God, this eternal covenant with God. Like every other human being, we are the descendants of Adam and Eve, created with the purpose of tending to God's physical creation. And as Jews, we are also the descendants of Avraham and Sarah, created with the purpose of tending to our personal relationship with the God that resides within our souls. Our individual task, this week's parsha reminds us, is to discover and nurture that makom, that sacred place of God within us, where God resides and can be felt within us. For it is the godly within us that truly makes us human beings. So just before we conclude, you may be wondering about that third creation story. I mentioned this is the second of three. Well, that third creation story has similar themes of pain and disruption 
and departure. Or we might say rather than departure, we might say exodus. Torah takes us from the creation of humanity to the creation of the Jewish soul this week, and finally to the creation ultimately of the Jewish nation. Each story is filled with its moments of self-actualization, of departure and transformation. But we'll save that story, that final creation story for its appropriate time, January 8th, by the way, to be precise. So for now, we'll just leave it at our creation as Jews and the task that lies before us. And we'll say Shabbat Shalom. We'll turn now to the Alenu. And uh, if you are able and would like to invite you to please rise as we join together. Alenu le shabach la adon ha kol la teit kedula liotze her breishit shelo asanu kegoye ha aratzot velo samanu kamish pechota adama shelo sam chelkenu kahem vegohor alenu kechol hamonam. Vanachnu korim, umis tachavim, umodim. Lifne melech, malche hamlachim, akadosh baruchu. Vene emar, vehaya adonai, le melech al kol haaretz. Bayom hahu, bayom hahu, ye adonai echad, ushemo, ushemo, ushemo echad. And if you remain standing, we turn now to words of remembrance remembering those whose shoulders we stand upon, those who have blessed our lives and continue to bless us, to bless our lives as we remember and recall them. We remember first those whose families are in the period of Shiva, the first seven days of mourning or Shloshim, the first 30 days of mourning. We remember Sharon Goldenberg, aunt of April Schaefer, and Jason Woods. We remember Rosalie Lewis, aunt of Sarah, and Michael Chaskis, great aunt of Natanya and Mira, and Elliot Nickberg, husband of the late Rosia Nickberg, father of Adina and Jerry, grandfather, <clears throat> grandfather of two, and great grandfather of four. And we call to mind as well those whose yard site falls on this Shabbat, the anniversary of their passing remembered on this Shabbat. We remember Barbara Adeshek, Molly Edelman, Herman Berwald, Gertrude Bubar, Irving Coleman, Beatrice Dumas, Leonard Fryman, Melvin Gantman, Henry Gray, Edward Jacobs, Suzanne Kallick, Richard Kirshner, Gerald Kopelson, Maria Korenhauser, Francis Levy, Frida Lowitz, Sonia Esther Margolis, Rose Reed, Erwin Rosen, Sulana Ross Chiat, Saul Spiegel, Raymond J. Sprague, Minna Torkian, Stephen Wagmeister, and Merle Weil. Of each of them, we say zichronam libracha. And if you are remembering someone the Shabbat whose name we have not mentioned, I invite you to please enter their name into the chat box as we now turn to these words of remembrance and join together. Yit kadal v'yit kadash shemei rabba ve'alma divra chirutei v'yamlich malchutei v'chayi chon u'v'yom echon u'v'chayi d'chol beit Yisrael Ba'agala uvizman kariv imru, amen. Yehe shmei rabba mavarach le'olam ulame almaya. 
vit barach, vit tabach, vit pa'ar, vit romam, vit nase, vit adar, vit ale, vit halal, shame de kutsha, brechu. Le elamin kol birchata vashirata, tush bechata venechemata, da amiran be amave imru, amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shamaya, vechaim alenu ve alkol yisrael ve imru, amen. O se shalom bim romav, hu ya se shalom, alenu ve alkol yisrael ve imru, amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn and comfort to all the bereaved among us, as we say, Amen. We invite you, if you have a Kiddush cup, to uh, raise it now as we join together in celebrating the blessing of this sacred time, the blessing of Shabbat. Let's join together. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Borei peri hagafen Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher kitshanu b'mitzvotam v'ratzavanu V'shabbat kotsho b'ahava uvratzon hinchilanu Zikaron le maase vreshi ki hu yom tahila la mikra e kodesh zehe letziat mitraim ki banu vacharta etanu kidasta mikol hamim Vishabat kot shecha, Vahava uvrat son, in khatanu, Baruch ata adonai, Mikadesh, Hashabat lechayim. Now, I don't happen to have a hall with me, but if you have one with you, I invite you to uh, take it out or just place your hands toward the screens and we will all touch this challah together. <laughs> we'll join together in thanking God for all of the blessings that we share. There we go. The mill's got one. <clears throat> Amotzi lechem min haaretz Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Before right. we uh, unmute everybody, just a couple of other, couple more things to add to uh, this evening. It uh, has not escaped me that we stand uh, <laughs> the Shabbat just days away from voting. And, um, or I guess I should say, most of us have probably voted already. Um, but the end of the voting season, as it is now known. And I thought it might be good to offer a prayer and to think actually uh, about the words of this week's parsha, which will follow this prayer in the music of uh, <laughs> Cantor Shapiro. So I want to share with you <clears throat> a prayer that was offered 80 years ago, 1940, at the end of the 1940 campaign, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt voiced his deep sense of the solemn meaning of election day with this prayer. O God who has entrusted to us this good land for our heritage, May we always prove ourselves a people mindful of your favor and glad to do your will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Protect our liberties and fashion into one united people the multitudes brought hither out of many kindreds and tongues. Endow with the spirit of wisdom those to whom we entrust the authority of government. 
that there may be justice and peace at home and among the nations of the earth. In times of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness. And in days of trouble, suffer not our trust and faith to fail. And we say, Amen. As we conclude with the beautiful words, Debbie Friedman's interpretation of this parasha, Lechi Lach. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Here's a few announcements of upcoming events this uh, week. And um, please unmute yourselves and wish each other Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat shalom everybody. It's so Shabbat great to be This is each week. Mm -hmm. Hi, Karen. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Hello. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Oh, hi. Shabbat shalom. Don't forget yeah. to vote if you haven't already. Vote, 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 vote. <laughs> <laughs>